five fingers is very, they yeah. are very important. You only realize when your thumb is not there that you can't open your common buttons. Now, the purpose of the us pur being here is not is because not be I have any authority to make any of our future better than it can already be. It's because I might have a contribution that can be added to what you're already doing to give you the speed. Because that's one thing that I think we're lacking in Africa. You know, we have great mindsets, great people with great skills, with great ideas, but no speed. And what is driving the world today is technology. And technology is speed. <laughs> and if the world is running that fast, then who are we to walk? That's the question that I ask myself every day. And it's one of the reasons why I think young leadership is, is needed. Because the value that they have for time is completely different from people who have we? overused their time. I'm not interested in making why. money anymore. I'm not interested in acquiring riches anymore. I'm not even interested in building wealth for myself anymore. I'm interested in a legacy. Legacy is not the cars we drove, all the houses we built, or how handsome we look like, or the kind of hairstyle we had. Legacy is the investment we put in people. And so when we're not here, they remember us. And when we're gone and gone and gone, our absence is felt. Because in between the present that God gives us, which is life, there's a price that we pay, and that's going to be our death. But before the death, the only thing we have in between that we should yes, take it very serious it is very time. So time, of course, is our most essential tool. And therefore, out of time, I took this decision to lead a country. Because I don't want my time to be wasted. And I don't want the youth who are coming also to fall victim to time. Because I can see some of our elders have become a victim to time. They are very angry for not doing what they were supposed to do. But by the time you realize that time has beaten you, that's when it's too late. There is nothing like going back to too late and telling too late, make it too fast. And it's the fact. And it's really hitting us as black people and as Africans. Their skills that people have acquired in this room and their talent and knowledge that people have in this room, that suppresses what I have. So I'm also here to learn from you. We're going to have that open conversation to know how we can build our industry. But before we build our industry, what do we do? We have to build the people. I'm bringing mentality to be plugged into our personality. We have secured our personality. And when everybody was introducing themselves, it was personalized. Everybody introduced yourself based on their positions and their posts. The mentality now is where we have to go with that personality. If we don't have the two combined properly, we're not going to build the likes of the Hollywoods. We're not going to build the likes of the Facebooks. We're not going to build all of those things because they are not depending that infrastructure on personality. They've combined the two. The personality of the people are discovering their mentality on their platforms. And that's why they are connecting with them. And it's time that we think this way as black people. If we want to develop our country, our continent, and our race, these three things I stand for. I stand for the country, I stand for the continent, and I stand for the race. If Beyonce says that she's a singer, she is. Because she's been doing it since she was eight years old. If Michael Jackson says, look, I am this of the world, take his words serious. He's, he was born to do it. It's my situation here. I've been creating wealth. I've been managing money. I've been managing human beings since I was eight years old. So people might say whatever they want to say. People don't know who you are until they wear your shoes. So sometimes there's no point answering to people. <laughs> You're wasting your time. You know, and I also don't want to poke everybody on my way to where I'm going. I need to focus to get my destination. It's my destiny. There's so many people who are going to distract me on the way. I see them as they only distracting me because they lost their way. There's so many people who are talking behind me. I never respond to them. You know why? The only reason why they talk behind me is because they're behind me. 
In fact, if they were bold enough to even be in front of me, I would appreciate them more. Focus is the determination that needs total concentration. And total concentration can be the perfect method for whatever plan you have in this world. And since we started this conversation with time, time goes hand in hand with plan. If time is a husband, then his wife is plan. But industrialization is really what is coming. And that's what is needed. And that's what is going to help us and our children who are coming to industrialize their minds again. So by the fourth end of our Republican vision, by the time we're entering the fifth one, we're going to have skillful minded with skill set, with great mentality and great personality. We have 74.9% of this population, which is zero to 45. That's the numbers of the youth. Everything should depend on this population. From anything from 45 going, it's 25%. It's a quarter of this country. If you're going to sell this water, the 75% will buy the most. Anything. If you're going to build this country, the 75% are the ones who are going to build it. If this country is going to multiply in numbers, the 75% are the ones who are going to multiply it. The 25% have almost outlived their future. And how do we expect people who, are, who have outlived their future to build our future? It's only right that we take care of our mothers and fathers. It's about time we get it into our heads. It's our responsibility and our accountability that if someone has taken care of us to be 25 years old and have paid for our education, and everything. We shouldn't sit there for them to pay for our marriage, for them to pay for the house we live in, for them to pay and pay and pay till we have gray hair and catch up with them. If our parents are doing that to us, they are misleading us. We na me pese me tre e me bu na o mo ba. Na o ma dwene no the mentality na sesa sesa. Why dey why 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 e yi na wo de wani ato so? Abai na na ase why? Why? O papa, ni wo tre no. O ma me so wo tre no. Unim dada. And so opesa wo tena omoso and become a liability. We don't want that kind of youth. We need to quickly empower our youth because that is the machine that will drive us in future. The likes of Bill Gates, Zuckerberg, and all of these people will come from that youth if we start to empower them. But since the government was not ready to do that for me, I realized that they're not going to do that for many. The entire creative arts industry wants to know your plans for, for the creative arts. First of all, let me start from tourism. I think the tourism in this country is just a saying. Because if I live in this country and one of our main uh, tourist centers is a dungeon that we were buried, beaten, and extracted from this country in, and we've kept it for 10 decades to always lead people and say, come, this is where they caught us. This is where they were beating us. This is where they used to kill us. My friend, what are you doing? So first of all, that tourist, the tourism itself, I think we need to shut it down small and think properly. The first thing I'm going to do is to look at national development that will attract the world. Most of you know that I own tigers. The two tigers I bought was to build my own zoo. I only had one acre, but I built the zoo right in Achimota Forest. And it's a private zoo, but it has a swimming pool for tigers. The humans go in there, they tell them to sit, roll, they play balls with them, everything. One is called Kunta, the other one is called Kinte. The story of these two animals is me telling the world that you took us as slave, Kunta Kinte, and took us to another world we survived. Now, I have come to take your tigers from Asia, from the jungle, and I brought them home. And Kunta and Kinte is going to survive because the Asians said that they will never survive in East, West, and North Africa because of our climate control. So they only gave it to South Africans. You might think that I'm only interested in a zoo. No, I only put the zoo there because Africa's biggest park is that land that is lying there. This is tourism. How are you going to build a zoo, a water park, hotels, malls, 
all different things on 330 acre in the middle of the city of Accra, surrounded by Nigeria, Ivory Coast, this. Do you know what it takes? You can put an airstrip. So by weekend, people are flying from Ivory Coast, from Liberia, from Nigeria, and they will come to this park. You make life better for people. Development makes life better for people. The only reason why people are going out to America and to Europe is because they have development. But I can mention 10 in my plan. We are taking the scraps of China to do our development, putting a local bond on a building that is supposed to be memorial. Nine, ten o'clock, this country is closed. So, you know, our development is the first issue that is stopping people from visiting our country. How easy are you making it for people to want to be here? Dubai is a corner of the world. They built some of the biggest airports, came with the biggest flight packages, and did water fountains, development, water sports, hotels, everything. Guess what they turned Dubai to? Center of the world. Everyone that buys a ticket that goes through Dubai, they can be going to America, London, or Dubai. You get charged for aviation tax of $100. It's automatic on the ticket. That's how they even do their visa transaction. So it's visa free, but you have to pay for that to guarantee the visa. So in a day, a million people are going through there. Times it by 100. This guy is making $100 million of a country that the population is only 4 million, but the apartments there is 22 million. Hey, that means one person owns four or five apartments. His strategy of tourism has brought enormous world attention and attraction to it. And what was it based on? Development. So that's tourism, first of all. If you chose me as a leader tomorrow, I will close a lot of your ministerial offices. We have to start it all over again. Now, let me talk about the creative industry. For instance, a musician can tour the whole country if every year they have two to three million people visiting in weeks. So the Americans, they don't even need England or Africa. So if you call them, you have to pay them times 10 before they come. Because they don't need you. When they start from Arizona, they can go all the way. California, and near, 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 Virginia, all the nears. They will go. And every one of them is paying them. Because they have that value for them. I'm not a politician. If I was, I'll be here promising you different things. I'll do this. I'll do this. I'll do this. To make your head big and expect something that is never going to come. So I'm only going to share the truth with you because I'm a leader, I'm a visionary, and all my decisions, my plans, and my idea is purposeful. We all need to be a part of a purpose before it can happen. Not promise. Promise is just a program. And I'm telling you, even if you promise your wife, and she is the only one that I promised, I did not let her down. But if she had waited any longer for, than two months, I could have changed my mind. That is the truth about promising. You People change their mind when they get there and uh, they forget the promise. Maybe a, another person gets in the picture, then, you know, forget the last time what we said and all of that. So I want to be discussing this and sharing my policies with you so you can see my purpose for this nation and for this country. So the cre a creative industry, one, you're lacking inspiration and energy from the outputs of this country's development, global recognition, acknowledgement, all of that. First of all, that reduces your energy, the potentiality. You know, the things that you need to say that what I'm doing is good. <laughs> what I'm doing is powerful. It's going everywhere. It's because if you compare Ghana to Nigeria, it's huge. But Nigeria has a great development. The only thing that we're not seeing is that they're 260 million. So if 1% of Nigerians are bad, it's 2.6 million. Okay? It's almost, uh -huh, uh -huh. it's almost the whole Ghana being bad. But then they will look very bad. And if their development, it's, it's not fully done, 
you see it that way too. But they've gone very far when it comes to creative arts. They are global. They have stuff in England, in American shops. They have, they're selling stadiums outside Africa. It means that they have created something very powerful. And what do they use to create that? Their population, their development, and the returns of whoever that is entering their country and what they're doing from the outside. That's how they draw their inspiration. I think Ghana, we're very stiff right now, and it's because of the history of our governance. And I see that as some of the issues in our system. So if I am going to do anything to help the creative industry, I don't need to come with a promise again. I need to find your issues. I need to find what is wrong with your industry. And that's the one that I'm going to attack. I'm not going to attack any politician. I'm not going to attack the government. If he can do it, he would have done it. He just doesn't know. And because you are also sitting down waiting for him, I want to advise you that, please, you run out of time. We need to decide now. And so creative art. I would like to build with Ghana's contribution, especially the creative industry and some sort of state funds, whether it's taxes or not. We need to create our first industrial studio. When I say studio, I'm talking the likes of Hollywood Studio. I'm talking the likes of uh, Tele Perry Studio. Okay? It costs you between 500 million to 700 million dollars. But it will yield you 7 billion in 10 years. This is called feasibility in business. You do your feasibility and then you do your investment. This investment and development it's my best two qualities in the corporate world. I understand investment and I understand development. Question. Does your government know this? No. Your president? No. He's very good. And I can say it in front of any president. That African presidents are very good in spending money, not making money. So they're always going to come and spend money and find a way to tell you this is how I spent it. What a big mistake. You're not cutting the money. If you're cutting the money and you're even spending it, you still have cost. But you're borrowing the money. Your cities itself, you're buying it. They have to bring it from Switzerland before you get it. And you don't have any solution of what brings you returns. There is no IRR in their planning. Whether you're talking of the creative art, because if I don't create wealth, to circulate in the creative industry. You don't have one. You don't have one. So if I invest 500 million, guess what I'll be doing? This is Nigeria. They'll come to this studio. South Africa, they'll come. Ivory Coast will tell you to find a translating system for this, that, that French, they'll come. When you start pulling four or five countries in Africa into your country to just come and produce their movies, act, and get A-class movies, whatever, you, first of all, you're feeding your tourism. Secondly, you are extracting other people's economy into your economy. And thirdly, you're building a continental and a global recognition. So that's the investment and development that we need. We need to have that plan. Sandro is here. He will tell us if Americans find out that we have this studio, there are like a hundred thousand Americans who are trying to get to Hollywood. They will come here because maybe they can't afford who you know to get there. So they will come here. If a hundred thousand Americans are coming to your country to invest, 10,000 or 20,000. Do you know how that, how much that is? That's 200 million. That's just Americans. And that 20,000 could be invested in a month or two.
So it's not about you putting the 500 million or 700 million to make the creative industry become globally attractive and respected. It's about what you get out of the cost of your investment. And our leaders don't understand it because that's not how they became leaders. They became leaders by papers, by books and a template that you study political science. Okay, this is the template. You go everywhere. Uh, there is 275 constituencies. Every constituency, you give them 500 in an envelope, t-shirt, bag of rice, and you f find this one. They do the same. You go around. Hey, I've won. Okay. Do you think somebody that will give you 500 cities, a t-shirt, and a bag of rice will come to power and want to build $500 million studio for you? He's coming to take his money back. It's an investment. For him, that's what he's putting you. So when he comes to power, he needs to get that money times 10 before he even thinks about your studio. That's the difference between me and the existing leaders. So I don't coincide with them and I'm not aligned with them. Maybe this could make me one of the most hated young boy around, but also loved by the youth the most ever because I am the truth. And I only believe in the truth. And I think that's the only thing that has brought me this far. I didn't lie to myself to get here. I didn't think that I had to steal or rob somebody to become successful. I knew that it's hard thinking and it's hard working. So for the creative industry, movie side, you need this. Two, I think you need a distribution platform that is owned by us with the governmental support. So we can sit in Ghana and have a deal with Colombia, with Paramount, with uh, Netflix, with everyone. Because you have a distribution platform. That distribution platform is feeding the world with data and information. That studio, world-class studio that you have, is giving them the exact standard that needs to go onto that platform. Here's are the rules and the regulations. You want Italian shoes? You have to do it from a plant. You cannot do it from your hand. <laughs> it needs to come out perfect. And you can't, the mistake needs to, even if it's wrong, they call it, what, factory reject or whatever, they remove it. Get it back. So it's the same thing. We have movies that is not fully standardized. The story needed a bit of twist. But the screenwriter was not too close to maybe the person putting the script together and the producer, but they're working together. And there's some breakups here and there. And when they finish, one by side, roadside uh, distribution. And the whole thing is bootlegged. And before you know, shh, dead. How many stories can we write in our lifetime, each of us, if we wanted to make a movie? And even if it was once a year we were doing, it won't be more than 30 or 40, unless we have a, a room of a library of writers and this and that. And you see, these are vacuums. They're huge vacuums. And it hurts to look at some of you with your intelligence and everything. And these vacuums are ahead of you. Because some of them, when you get to the front of it, you can't even jump. You jump, you fall. So you just have to turn around. So I can't go further. And I want us to look at the vacuums first and start to build those foundations. So when our ideas kick off, the youth that are coming will use technology and the modern Gen Z mindset to come and expand it. So you have a distribution platform. You thought it was making you 2 million or 3 million every month. Some young person that understands the internet left, right, center will come and turn it to 100 million a day. Dollars. And that's because we give them the chance to be part of our development, of our idea making, all of that at a very early age. This we should take this advice that the younger you are, the faster you think. The older you are, the wiser you become. But the slower you do things.
So it always has to be an equilibrium balance. If you stop the other people from coming through the pipeline, you will be there alone. And you will get to a point, you want to find the light at the end of the tunnel, but you're standing in front of the light for so long that you've forgotten that there is a light already that you're looking for is in front of you. Unless you have someone behind you that is going to push you and say, oh yeah, go out. It's my turn. So for me, the creative industry needs these two things and it's very important. When you have these two things, now you're coming to royalties. You're coming to residual income. You're coming to benefits and endorsements. You're coming to so many things. Okay? I've seen that our arts are selling. The people are buying it less than 100,000 from us and selling it millions. There's one guy that made it through uh, Koa Mwaku. And Mwaku is now protecting his work. Because he got the chance to work with the likes of Dior, Christian Dior, and all of these international people. So his art shot up to $500,000 to a million. But now he feels so protected. My worries about Mwaku is that I am super proud of him. But if we're not careful, there's only going to be one Amwako and he will go and he will take another 50 years. Instead of creating a hundreds or thousands of Amwako so the art industry will grow, we are pushing Amwako to a corner that he has to protect. Himself. He's dodging some government stuff that it will come to him, something, 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 instead of we lifting him. When I was young, my favorite magazine was and I'm reading it, and every time I bought the magazine, I see Bill Gates or I see uh, uh, some American rich billionaire. So one day I decided that, you know, I won't buy this again until the day me, myself, I appear in front of this. That's it. I'm done. And that was my inspiration. Today, I want to be one of the first trillionaires in the world because I want to even pass them. But guess what I'll do when I become a trillionaire? I'll borrow the money back to you to the country. Uh, my dream and my vision is that if my country simply don't know how to make the money, I'll make it and I'll give it back to them. I'll borrow them. And the good thing about it is that I also don't intend to take the money back. Unlike IMF who is chasing us every day and pulling everything from us. Because I want to set a great example. The money it's not the substance that will save us, but money is a necessity. You will leave it. Just like how you came without it, you will go without it. And anyone who is 75 and extremely successful and rich, every day wake up with one problem. They wake up with one problem. The problem is who are we going to leave this money for? The, the, his son is sitting right next to him. But he knows he's not going to be able to do what he's doing. And for you to build billions, you will never give it to those who don't know how to manage and build billions. You would rather give it to charity. That is the mentality. It's a religion to become a billionaire. It's an action to become a millionaire. But before you become a billionaire, you need to adapt a particular religion of living and understanding humanity and understanding the value of money. Yes, this is when God opens the door for you. And it's going to take a lot of guts to walk through that door. And when you enter that door, you're going to remember to stay in the room or what it's going to take for you to remain in the room is brains, is no more guts. Because you're going to see eight or 12 men sitting down with so much brains, reason why they're still in the room. This is a billionaire's world. Let's build our youth and our nation to generate this type of millionaires and billionaires mindset. Because the money is just cash. The mindset is the treasure. The cash itself, it can fly and it can go. But if the mindset is not so powerful, it can just vanish. You can have a billion and the way it's all set, it is one day you see it, it all start crashing. And if you don't have a quick mindset to save it, 
it dies. That means the money has left you. It's going to someone else who has the right mindset to consume it. I would like to say that today, I have the right mindset for this nation. Not to just consume money, but to create it. Create the wealth in this country. I simply know. I might not know 10, 20 years from now because I'll probably be getting older. People say I'm crazy. People say, oh, he's lunatic. He's this. Because they can't stand me. Yes, I'm fire. I am something that you've not seen. Yes, and I'm proving to you that, yes, I'm not the average type. And I'm not the one who is sitting down waiting for anyone to come give me anything. I am bringing you something. I am giving you something. You know, I'm not taking anything from you. What I have is what I have come to add to society, to nature, to human beings, and to this world. There is no one that can discourage me. There is no one that can discredit my hope. I am a one-man institution that believes in humanity. And I believe I can make it better. So, in a nutshell, these are a few of my credentials that is stipulated with the policies that will come in the creative industry you know investment development establishment for recognition for acknowledgement and for tourism this will bring empowerment in our system once you're able to build the foundation first you will start to see how to position all the people with skills and talents thank you